Howdy, y'all. It's Trip. Um, we're going to make us a headphone stand real quick. All right. I've already gone ahead and marked my top kerf begin line or outer line and bottom kerf outer line. Um, I'll just tell you what they are. Uh, the next vid, I'll explain how I came up with them. All right. Um, this one on the top is three and one half inches from the end, all right? Three and one half inches straight line, kerf goes, as you can see, just inside that line. On this end, the bottom end. This line is marked at four and three eighths of an inch. First kerf just inside of that line. So that'll be the outside kerf for the bottom 75 degrees, and this will be the top or outside kerf for the top 105 degrees. I went ahead and cut these. It's about a height of 0.75 millimeters of material left. Uh, was accidental at first, but it seems to be working. I just want to see how it will look. Quick note about, uh, you know, can I kerf when I've filled knots? You can just need to fill them with epoxy or super glue. Your choice. Uh, if they're thin, I mean, if they're small like this, I would use a thin first and just let the wicking action pull it in and set it aside, let it dry on its own twice, do that, and then maybe top it with a little medium and sand, whatever. But it's more important that you get the thin into the crack so when you do curve it, it won't shatter on you. So, all right, so we've got this. This is a 18 and a half inch long board that is three and three eighths inches wide. Uh, I have, you know, of course, milled it uh, and it's, uh, you know, square on all sides um, and it's going to be the gaming headset uh, stand. So what we're going to do is cut eight kerfs here, eight there, going this way, uh, for the 105 degree angle. We're going to cut 10 from here. So 10 total and this way from there for the 75 degree angle. We've already cut one on each side, so that would really be seven, and that would really be nine. So we're nine more from that point. So I'm just gonna get straight to it. Um, I've got my one eighth of an inch drill bit. I've got the hole covered in how to make the sled or in the earlier video to slot that drill bit in place. And then I'm going to slot and then cut uh, seven more curves and then flip slot and cut nine more curves in. I'm also going to turn on the back system. So just sec. <laughs> Please do seven more from here. Flip it over, do the same thing, nine times in.
one more. You can see the inside. Already wants to bend, right? There's not, we're not gonna have to go through any extraordinary measures to get this to bend. Also check out this hole. That's a knot, it just popped out underneath. But that's cool. We'll just be careful and not, uh, when we do bend it, we will bend it once, tape it, and then begin the gluing or process, all right? So what's next? Well, ultimately you just wanna bend it. Uh, but before you do the, any of that, you're going to want to, you're probably going to want to clean up the edges. I mean, like, they aren't, you can see the tear out here. It's always going to happen on the back side, and that back side will flip depending on which side. Uh, it's obviously not as bad as the miter gauge tear out is, uh, but it's going to need to be cleaned up. And then this is how we're going to do that. This is the safest way to do that. First, you're going to need a piece of, uh, of uh, scrap quarter inch ply uh, that, you know, is long enough to cover, you know, over and then some across both of the curved angles before they're bent. And let's see. I mean, this, this plywood's bowed, really doesn't matter. So we're going to do the following. Put it up against the fence, why? Because I mean, this is going to ride up against a fence and, and rip clean like a 32nd of an inch. So I want it, I mean, I either want this action or, you know, that's the only, either that or just absolutely flush. I'm going to try for flush by just tapping it, both pieces up against this fence and seeing how that turns out. Yeah, pretty flush. So I'm going to double side tape this to this and then it'll be nice and sturdy I'm, when I do double side tape this to this I will make sure that I cut a strip of double side tape that spans clearly an inch over on each side this curve and this curve and I'll make sure that that is the most important I, I will remember that that is the most important he, those two are the most important pieces of double sided sticky tape in this whole equation because that's what's going to keep these curves from chipping away. I mean, really, if, you, if you're feeling awfully cautious, you could, I would, I've gone so far as to do two strips, okay? Uh, and, and, you know, of course, tape here, tape here, you don't necessarily need it here. Uh, and then you do the sip rip where you set your fence to just, you know, one thirty second of an inch. Uh, uh, you know, within almost two, you know, within one thirty second of an inch of the actual width of this board and rip it through with the kerf fence facing down your plywood on the cast iron. All right. And the, the blade will come through, hit the back and that, that strip of material that you've left behind will protect the kerfs. You just don't want it hitting from the bottom and you definitely don't want it hitting you know, any of these without being double side taped some. Uh, I'm not going to show it in this video because um, I've got a short vid on it on my channel. So if you're looking at this video now, just click on my channel name and go look for the short vids under videos and find the one that says sip ripping clean and edge, right? Uh, it'll also, I do believe that it covers, um, you know, what kind of, you know, like after you do that sip rip, don't take the double-sided tape off or leave it all together in case if you do want to do any kind of uh of uh chamfering you know beveling so typically what i i've been doing lately is i'll cut a 30 degree uh, uh bevel or chamfer um on say the top outer edges 30 degrees maybe it takes it, it extends like a quarter inch down um then I will uh, repeat for the other side, um, 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 but maybe more drastic. I don't know. You just do you. You do you. Uh, whatever you do, don't don't take it to a router table because it won't matter even if you do have a sandwich of uh, plywood underneath it. 
uh, it won't matter. It'll still shatter it. I, I, I know all this because I tested it all. I went through all of it, you know, how I initially wanted to do it and then how I thought it should be done. Uh, basically, this came from the console, the media console, you know, like, like uh, the, uh, that first time I made that one, uh, or the last time I made it, the, the last prototype, it... Yeah, I went ahead and put the the rabbits in the back, and I, I believe I, I was you know put some edge effects on the front edge, show edge, uh, before I curved the boards, and it ended up causing the curves to be an irregular space apart, right? Because there's too much wiggle room for the bit. Uh, I think I've got a way to fix that, but that that's another story. Uh, but that's it. So. You know, at the very least, you want to look at that separate video and clean up the sides. Uh, beveling, you know, like like I would I would encourage you to look at uh, 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 Chris Solomoni's video on his uh, epoxy and veneer uh, sandwich uh, headphone stands. That's where these angles and proportions were were ripped from with his blessing. He's a good man, and he said, "Okay, no problem." Uh, but you know, why reinvent the wheel, right? Uh, those are his angles, basically is what I'm saying, uh, uh, with his blessing um, for this lesson. <laughs> so yeah, do all that, do whatever you want. Bevel the ends, look to his to see how you should do it. But, um, you know, basically with the chart that I posted on Instagram, I believe on the 21st of August, 2020, you get, you know, the number of curves per bend. So after we've cleaned up all these edges, it'll just be a simple matter of, of just, I'm not gonna do it now, but slowly and uniformly bending these pieces. Uh, there's also a short bit of that on the channel and then gluing them up. So this is what you need. This is the bottom, this is the top. If you wanna do any kind of notch for the headphones to retain, retain those, you'd have to do it here. Uh, but basically that's it. 10 and eight with a space in between, First one at four and three eighths, first one at three and a half, and you will have the headphone stand as posted on Instagram. All right, y'all, thanks.